Things Prototype, episode number 16. Decided to do one more tonight. Uh, we're going to continue working on our custom editor, and hopefully by the end of the hour, we should have something a little bit closer to our uh, current setup on all of the faces working. So one of the things that really kind of rustled my jimmies was as I changed this and updated our face, it didn't save the path type or the rotate amount. And so I'm considering storing this data in the cube face itself. So that way when this editor enables itself, it can look at the cube face and use that data. So let's go over to our cube face. And this one will be public path type. And I think we're also going to want to have a rotate amount stored in the cube face as well. So let's see, here's our editor. And on enable, we'll get the target. And we'll store the, we'll grab the face. And then we can set the selected path type. Oops, it's rotate amount. Oh, rotate amount should be an integer. That is correct. Now we'll make a note here that this is editor data. Cool. Oh dear, <clears throat> we don't just want the cube face. Um, our spawner isn't going to have a cube face. Our cube face is going to be in our L path. So we can assume, because we're only working on the up direction still, and I think the solution to expanding it to a group shouldn't be too terrible. You know, just use an array with some, or a dictionary of some sort. Aha, uh -huh. okay, okay, I think I know what we need to do. We don't want to get this. We want to target. How did we do this down here? Here we found the path. So let's privatize this function. Let's extract it. Private transform get face transform, and then this is a cube face direction direction.
Hmm, I find myself copying and pasting this target everywhere. Um, let's just set that in on enable, right? We only need to do that once. Get face transform up. I only care about up. So get the up face, we set the type, rotate amount. <clears throat> Ooh, that was a close call. We want to use the member variable here, not a local variable. We can get rid of this. Uh, keep our pop-up, keep our UI, keep our wrapping, keep this button. Oops, that is CFD, cube face direction. There we go. So now we're leveraging this function in multiple spots. And this is not going to be helpful because it is still L0. Uh, let's do straight 90. I should be able to unselect, reselect. And it didn't work. Okay, so we got some null references. <clears throat> oh boy, right. The face transform is the parent. <laughs> oh boy, this is getting hacky. Well, you know what, let's pre-calculate these faces now, right? If I find that something's gross, I want to fix it right now. So, let's see, cube face spawner editor. Let's have each of these get a dictionary of cube face direction and cube face. And the first time we enable if cube face dictionary, we'll set aside, we'll allocate that memory, and then let's just call a quick function here. Populate cube face dictionary. <clears throat> so in here, we'll do a face index. And then we'll have a CFD current direction. And we'll cast that integer to a enum type. Oh, cube face direction. There we go. So now I've got the direction. <clears throat> and we can say. Cube face dictionary 
uh, add current direction. And then we want to get the face transform of the current direction. Get child zero. Get component. Oh, this could have a possibility getting us a null reference exception because we're doing lots of dots here. So let's break it up. So if the face transform is not equal to null, then we'll get the component of cube face from that child. It should loop through all of the face directions, attempt to grab each of these. I feel comfortable with that. Populate cube face dictionary. Now, we are going to have to make a note to remember that whenever we update our faces, we might need to modify this cube face dictionary. But now we can use the dictionary and make things prettier. Here's the target face. Okay. Let's do half curve down, 270. Off, back on. Dang it. Hmm. <laughs> did we get a no reference exception? We did. Hmm, I wonder what the path is. Oh, print. Hey, oh, <laughs> dang it. Debug.log. Face container, up face. Is target nothing? Target is nothing. Hmm. Let's see what's happening here. When does this enabling happen? Should happen when we load. Yeah, it's happening every time. Oh! Wait. Is this the problem? Is this the first thing we need to do? That can't be it. Hey, that seemed to make it happy. 
Almost. Child out of bounds. <laughs> right. Um, okay, let me break this up even further. And then we'll get the child. Let's look at this face here. The path type is not set. Oh. <laughs> that is important. We'll get the component, and it is rotate amount. And path type we are going to have to make a new one. Let's do L diagonal one eighty. Yeah! One step at a time. Uh oh, what are these errors? Old errors, right. Okay. We got a face working. It's pretty easy to change these. Not pretty yet. Maybe we could make it prettier. I think we could. Oh, you know what? We don't even need... I don't think we really even need this data here. Right? No, we do. We totally do. So we just have these two things here. So let's pull them out into a structure. <clears throat> no, we'll need we'll use a class. We'll use a class. Private class face data. And then these would be public. This would need to be system serializable. Maybe this needs to be public too. I think it does. I don't think I can do this in C sharp. Nope. We've got all of these face datas. Okay. So we'll wrap this in a loop. Oh boy. 
And this is all face data at face index. I feel like this is going to give us some breaks because we don't have all of the faces actually showing up. And we're going to have to do all, oh no, all of this stuff for each of the six faces as well. Let's see. So that means we're going to need six pop ups. We're going to need a label. Um, there's one thing I haven't shown yet. And that is going to be essentially a collapsible tool. So, like we can do here in our custom editor, we can write our own little arrow. Okay, so we need to get the tool of the current face. So we need current data. And then I'll say current data dot show data is equal to editor GUI layout. That is called a lapse. No, it is called fold. Show data, and then this is going to be, this is going to be nice. Okay. First, we want to take the current face direction. We want to cast face index to that current face direction. And then we want to convert that enumerator to a string. <laughs> And if we're showing the current one, and then everything is just current data dot. We're getting better. And then this is going to be a very similar thing where we have to loop through all of our faces. Okay, and everything here. Oh, no. Control Z, C. Should be current face dot. And here, instead of always looking for up, we want to cast the face index as. 
cube face direction. That is a lot of typing, guys. I am worried. Oh. So here we loop through all of our faces, we get the target face. Um, but it is possible that this face might be null. Whoa, whoa, hey, no. <laughs> F1 instead of escape. Okay. How about now? Well, this is cool. We got six things over here. Up. Oh. Remembered. Oh boy. Let's try right. Um, L diagonal 270. Oh, that's funny. All of these are path type L. But right, it seemed to work. Oh no, now this is, now it's gone. Maybe we need to store show editor data. So here we're storing it. Um, hmm. <laughs> it's breaking here, I think. Layout current data. But all face data, there should always be current data here. Uh, back should be facing towards us. Let's do a straight. <clears throat> so I believe the error, the real cause of the error is here. Oh boy, that's a lot. So it can find the target face.
Um, actually, before we go any further, I kind of want to change this path type to none. That should be the default. I would like to leave some empty faces up there, right? How are we doing on time? Hmm, halfway, perfect. Nice. Okay, so we've got none as the default. Now what happens in the editor when I click the button? Make sure there's, if there is a child, destroy it. Try to grab. So before this, we'll have an early out. If current face dot select path type equals none, continue. Let's try, I'm just going to get rid of all of these here manually. We're still getting runtime exceptions. Key not found. Exception. That means somewhere that we're using our dictionary. Cube face dictionary. Okay, so let's recalculate this here. <sighs> dictionary and direction. If dictionary contains key, current direction equals false, continue. Wait a minute. If it doesn't have that key, then I would want to do this. Hold on, I need to think about this more. So, we have a dictionary. Those dictionaries are directly related to the cube faces that exist in the hierarchy. It is possible, and likely in fact, that our cubes don't always have every face defined by the designer. So if the face doesn't exist in the dictionary, I definitely still do want this face data to show up. And continue? Yeah, sure. Uh, debug. <laughs> I'm just not sure if this is going to happen. Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, found our faces. Can probably clean up this stuff soon. Okay, so this is L270. Deselect. Ooh, errors. And it's just not drawing anymore. Okay, so the first time it works, this is our first error at 98. All face data. That's what I thought. So wait, here it contains a key.
It does contain the key. I feel like this is going to erase previous data sets. Really not sure if this is necessary. Although I didn't see an uh oh here. So maybe. Wait, just because I didn't see an error once and I delete the code, that's crazy. Boom. L270, looking good. How about a back face? of half curve up zero. Clear. Let's deselect, reselect. Oh! All 270. <sighs> okay. Let's spin this. Ah, hey Maximum. Uh, that is a good point. I wonder where I could put the camera. Um, yeah, having it in front of the inspector is not great. You've caught me at a strange time with my code. I am in the middle of overhauling my uh, custom editor. And so I believe that if I go to my main scene, or one of my test scenes, things might look bad. Oh, hey, nice. So yeah, it's just a simple path-following game. Oh, he died there. Hey, nice. He usually doesn't die. Hmm. But yeah, simple path-building game. Um, full three-dimensional movement. I just recently created these models. I've been working on it for about three weeks. <clears throat> yeah, it's always fascinating to watch other people write code. Hey, bug fixing is super important. <laughs> Some good techniques out there. So I do believe that this is actually working now. Do you uh do you write code yourself, Max? Mm-hmm. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's truly a wonderful thing. Actually, uh, I teach at a university for uh, video game coding and programming.
yeah, it's pretty fun. Get to see some cool stuff, you know, learn new technology. Work on my own project about one or two hours every day. I don't think I need this anymore. So right now I've got my designer able to select a face, pick a path type. Uh, down is not a good example. On the right over here. Uh, pick a path type, spin it around, update the faces. So maybe I want to test this weird loop here. And that's cool, but my old code doesn't know about this yet. So when I hit play, my old code is dropping new faces on top of the old faces. Looks pretty janky. Although I do like this shape. That's pretty neat. Nice two curves together. That makes sense. So in here, loop through my faces. Oh, starting faces. I don't care about this. Here I decide to make it randomly. Are you not automatically updating faces when you rotate? Um, actually, like if I change the rotation of, of any of these, what's actually happening is it's destroying the current one and creating a new one with the correct rotation. I'm not too worried about performance because this is just a tool to help the editor or the designer make levels more easily, like a better workflow. In terms of when the actual game is running, I never change the faces. I just spin the cubes and use quaternions and math uh, so that they all stay what they are. Yeah, one of the rules, uh, when you're making tools for people, tools don't have to be fast. You know, your end user is not going to be, um, well, I don't know, maybe they will. Then your tools have to be a little more optimized. But uh, usually your end user isn't going to have access to all of these tools. So worrying about optimization is sort of a waste of time. Just make it work as quickly as possible um, uh, with as few bugs, and then your team will be happy. What, uh, what languages are you studying, Max? <clears throat> yeah, it's very easy. I do that a lot. I overcomplicate things to absolute death. 
It's like I convince myself that I can see six months into the future, and so I start architecting and planning for all this crazy shit that might happen. And really, it would just be like a two-hour job to edit the code to get it the, to work how I want it to work. But very nice. Yep. Yeah, we teach mostly C as well. And in my engine building class, I do teach them to integrate Lua into their engine. Yet they write with C++. Okay, I think I can start deleting code. C is a great starting language. I mean, it's hard, but um, once you understand it, every other language is so easy. It's like you just need... I mean, every language has its own caveats and its own gotchas and little things that'll make you want to die, but... Really, after you learn C, just picking up a new language feels like cake. I've been following uh, Jonathan Blow is writing his own game programming language, and that's fascinating to see. I really want to use that for my next project. Whenever he's done with it, I don't know. I think it's going to be a few more years. Okay, let's nix this and so this cube face spawner face container dot find. Current face direction to string plus face. Yeah, yeah, I'm guilty of that too. Uh, that is why I decided to to um, basically I have a big calendar on my wall, and I've decided every day I'm gonna work at least one hour on this project. When I work one hour, I make a big X, and I'm going to finish this project. I always have uh, ooh shiny disorder, where I'm always daydreaming about cool stuff that I can do. And I hit a roadblock on a project, or something's not working well, and I'll just sort of slide off to this new and better project instead of buckling down and finishing it. So... That's uh, that's what this is an exercise in. It's a simple game, simple concept. I just want to bust it out and kill it. So let's see, if it has a child, then the face already exists. And I don't need to do anything. You know what? I could just continue here and drop this bool. And if it makes it to here, I know I need to randomize the face. 
And I've already done face oh, face randomization. Ah, yeah, deadlines. That's another really good, like, motivational tool. It's like, hey, man, I'm going to have this working by this time. And it's always hard to sort of guess when things are going to be done, because you could spend a week on a bug that, you know, just kicks your ass, and then you're behind on the project. But... Having someone to talk to and be like, hey, you know, this happened. I'm going to have to push my deadline back a little bit, but the deadline is still there. It's a nice, nice thing to have. Keep motivated. Uh, you know what? Let's just put this back in. I can do that. I'm going to instantiate the face at vector three zero. No rotation. I don't need this modifier here anymore. Row position stays false. Ah, deleting code is the best. <laughs> oh yeah, always the asterisk. <laughs> Hey! Oh, well. Okay, we got some explosions here. Breaking the cube core. Mmm. And I've been doing this everywhere, which is super bad, but um, I am assuming that each of these game objects are only ever going to have one child. And I'm trying to be good about my assertions. They should be called assumptions. Well, no, you, you, you are asserting that these two things are true. There we go. So otherwise, things will explode in a horrific way. But we didn't get the super multi-path overlap, which is nice. Yeah. Ooh, assertion failed. There we go. Yeah, why don't these have... Ah, L path, straight path. Mm-hmm. I just did not child them to the right object. Cube face spawner, new face set parent, face transform.
Okay. I do believe that... Mm hmm. Cube begin. Cube manager. What are you doing there? Okay, so it is working. I just haven't updated all of my cubes yet. I was just working with a single test cube. So these are dead faces, and then when I go, 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 not dead faces. Hmm. Well, I think that's it for my hour. I'm going to head out. I've got work tomorrow. I've got eight hours of lecture. It's pretty fun. <clears throat> but it was nice chatting with you, Max. I hope, um, I hope you swing by again. And if you stream or work on any projects, I'd love to check them out. Oh yeah. What's up, Baba? C sharp is so easy. Ah, oh, it's so lovely. Yeah. You don't have to worry about almost any syntax. You just you just make things happen. No memory management. But it's it's slower, so you know. You have to pay for it with speed. Okay, guys, I'm off. I'll see you again tomorrow. Yeah, press a dot, right? <laughs> uh, if you've gotten C++, C Sharp's going to be a, a walk in the park.